there's people making how-to videos on YouTube about how to remove a John Deere gas tank. And they're teaching people to bend the tractor in half, the body of the tractor. They are literally hoisting it up and bending it. Yeah. And number one, you probably don't have an engine hoist or a barn hoist. And number two, there's a much, much, much better way to do this. Stay tuned. Alright, th this job came to me because the guy had a whole lot of dirt and leaves inside the gas tank. We're not sure how it got in there, but it got in there. So we have to get the gas tank out, pressure wash the inside. Alright, disconnect the battery cables and remove the battery. Disconnect the four bolts holding the battery mount down. These will be on the outside of the bottom shroud. The six bolts holding down the bottom shroud. These bolts are on the inside of the shroud and go through the body and connect to the frame. Should be a bolt holding this down. On this one, there wasn't. Um, remove this also, and that'll give you a whole lot more access down there to those six bolts. If you go under the track. You can see there's a mount that sticks up right there. So that bolt goes all the way down and that mount there's a piece of the frame. Underneath the top shroud, there's four bolts connecting the cutting blade lever bracket. This step will free up the top shroud so you can move it around and pull it up and get it and keep it from binding up with the bottom shroud so you can remove the bottom shroud real easily. Remove the six bolts connecting the bottom shroud to the top shroud. These are on the outside and these are torques. Everything's freed up, remove the bottom shroud. This could be a little bit tricky, just keep trying to work it out. Step seven, remove the two spring bolts under the seat that connect the body to the rear frame. Put the gas level uh, adjuster and the shifter both in the forward position. 
and then remove the grips on the, on the levers. There's no big trick to these things. Um, there's no tool needed. What you need to do is just grab it and twist it. I don't know if they glue these things in. It's going to take a little bit of muscle. But keep twisting and eventually this will come off. And it's the same with this. They're just really on there tight. And pull while you're twisting. <clears throat> They're just really, really tight. And now the body will come off around. That lift the rear of the body up and rest it on the lever. Once you get the grips off, um, you can pull the back end of the body up and just lay it on to these shifter thingy my jiggies um, you should now have enough access to pull your gas tank out I just have to take my gas tank out and uh, flush it out and drain it and make sure it's dry as a bone in there and then reinstall it if all you're doing is removing your gas tank you can skip these next three clips if you're doing more if you need to get this body all the way off um, you're gonna have to take this top shroud off uh, you're gonna have to disconnect this shaft and come down under here and this is this is the nut that holds the steering shaft on this gear doesn't look too healthy does it uh, and that should be able to give you access to pull that out of there and you'll be able to get the whole body off. Right, unhook the gas line and plug it and go ahead and remove the gas tank. To get to this spot, uh, once you get confident with it, you're looking at a 20 minute job, but the first time you should just take your time and learn what's going on. It's really, it's really not that hard, and you don't, you don't want to bend the John Deere with it. That should just be illegal. I don't know what these people tell their customers. You know, we fished your tractor, come and pick it up, but we had to bend it in half. With, you don't do that, man. That's just, that's, that's, that's just immoral. It's, it's inhumane. Don't do that. So this following draining flush system is only for people who are dealing with dirt in their gas tank. If you're replacing your gas tank or whatever, you won't have to do any of this. Uh, because your gas tank will be purchased, ready to go. So don't even bother with this step. Hey, uh, don't use any chemicals or any soap in this process. Now we're going to power wash the inside of the gas tank and the entire tractor. So before you do that, plug the gas line that's still connected to the engine of the tractor. Repeat this drain and flush process as many times as it takes to get every single speck of dirt out of the gas tank. I wound up doing it six or seven times before I finally decided that was enough. And then you just uh, let it dry out, uh, preferably in the sun, for at least a day. Um, if you can do it two or three days, that'd be great. If you want people coming back to you to, to fix their stuff, clean it up for them before handing it over. Um, this step is well worth it and I'll come back every single time. While the body is up, um, I'm going to power wash all this grime, especially the grime and the cutting blades. 
I believe it's kind of slowing down the engine so it's running a little bit rough. Once I get it all back together, I'll give it a real good wash with some actual soap <laughs> and just do the body and the seat and the tires and stuff. Alright, it's uh, late into the afternoon on the following day and after pressure washing the inside of the gas tank, um, the gas tank has been drying out upside down uh, all night long and all day today. We're going to go check and see if it's dried out. And if it is, uh, we're going to start putting this puppy all back together. Well, check it real good. There might be a drop or two of water still in there. And hopefully, while I was uh, pressure washing the inside, I didn't bust the seal or anything. And that's why a lot of people would replace these gas tanks. Some of them, as they get older, they start uh, leaking right around the seal. It's a common problem with these John Baker tractors. It's been around the block a couple times, but these are great, great tractors. If you know, if you maintain them and keep the oil changed, and just like a car, if, if you abuse it, uh, you're gonna have problems. If you take care of it. You know, you just have to do routine maintenance and change the tires every once in a while. Alright, uh, now we're on the downside of the mountain, and there is a process um, of putting it all back together that's a little bit different than how you, you know, the opposite of how you took it apart. I'm going to stop and fix a few minor things. If you lose your patience, just uh, fast forward ahead. And step one is install the gas tank and connect the gas line. It's got this rubber grommet around it. And it's a lot bigger than the hole where it goes. So you have to get that rubber grommet into the gas tank. And that will help keep it down there. Um, you just have to kind of work it in a little bit at a time. Get something not sharp to kind of push it in all around the edge so you can get half of it in. It's not so easy getting that other half in. It's, it's, it is important that you get it down in there because you don't want it popping out of place. So you want to flush like that. Just stick the gas line onto it. Now you're going to drop the back of the body down onto the tractor and you're going to line up everything, especially the bolt holes, and especially those six bolt holes on the front where the bottom shroud connects it. connect the seat spring bolts. This tractor came to me with the safety wire that connects under the seat. Uh, it was disconnected. I don't know why. This switch is 
for the engine to stop if you fall off the tractor. And so, I mean, it is possible that the tractor would run you over and cut you into a billion pieces. Install the uh, shifter grip and grass height adjuster grip. Alright, now we come to the time where you should take care of all the weird stuff, the offbeat stuff, the stuff that you didn't plan on fixing, but when you took it all apart, you found something broke or loose or wobbly or just disconnected. Just to take care of all the little stupid problems, and most likely you are going to find little stupid problems. If the body doesn't go down flush and you're playing hell here trying to get it down into the frame, it's most likely because your clutch assembly is in the way. Now's the time to make sure this half ass kind of parking brake is working the way it's supposed to. And this connects from the actual body I, th I don't know if it goes into the frame but it just pulls back that clutch pedal let's try to get a zoom in here Yeah, uh, this tractor doesn't have any gas gauge light or any any idiot light or any gas gauge light so you never know when you're going to run out of gas. Um, this is what this is supposed to be for. You're supposed to be able to see your gas level right here. Um, and you should keep it at least at half a tank. Uh, but these things as they get grimy and dirty uh, they get hard to see so I washed it real real good from the inside. And uh, we're going to wash the outside real good before we give it back to them. It's funny what you find under these things. This positive battery cable. Look at, it, look at all the grime in there and all the crap building up on that. So I'm going to wire brush that. I'm not going to replace the cable. I could. It's just a short little thing. I don't want to clean up the cables until I get the battery in because... We might have to cut this negative cable and I want to make sure that I'm still going to have enough enough length to get to the top of the cable. I don't want, you know, the top of the, uh, the battery post. I, I don't want to make it too short because then I'm definitely going to have to run out and buy a new negative cable. While we're down here, yeah, this is a good look at the bolts that hold this body down onto the frame. Uh, once you get the shroud off, you'll be able to easily see all six of them. There's one in the front, and then there's two more on the right side of the back. And then it's the same pattern on the other side, and then there's one on the front. You probably won't be able to see it. Anymore. This clip broke at some point. Somebody tied a piece of wire around here and ran it to the negative side of the battery cable for a ground that had a pathetically bad ground on it. Here's your fuel filter right here. This one looks to be original and pretty rough. We should probably change that while we're under here. 
you guys who just skipped all that can pick it up here. Now it's time to install the bottom shroud. And that's six bolts going around the top and bottom connecting those two. And then there's six bolts connecting the bottom through the body to the frame. Make sure this uh, acceleration cable is on the outside of the battery frame gizmo platform. Make sure the battery mount is inside the bottom shroud. Make sure no wires are pinched over here. And at this point, you should be able to move this shroud freely around to line up all the holes. If you can't do that, you have something jammed up and something's wrong. Figure out what's wrong. Make sure the clutch is working properly. Nothing's bind up. And just maneuver this shroud around until all these holes line up nice and pretty. Now we're going to bolt the bottom shroud down to through the body and to the frame. As we stated while we were taking it apart, uh, these bolts are easiest to get to if you take the battery out and get down. Back like this. Reconnect the cutting blade lever bracket up under the top shroud. Uh, install the battery and connect the battery cables.
hook the ground cable up first and then hook up the positive cable. Fill up the gas tank, start it up, and take it for a spin. Now, because all the gas was drained out and most of the line came out, most of the fuel filter was leaked out, it could take a couple cranks of the engine to get gas all the way up to the carburetor, but uh, you'll be okay.